The Star Wars universe is one rich with lore and storytelling, and the video games are no exception. There have been video games spanning back all the way all the way back to around the time of the Empire Strikes Back, so we have had a long and healthy lifespan for video games in the Star Wars universe. However, a lot changed when Disney acquired Star Wars as a property and decided to change the continuity, rebranding existing supplementary materials as Legends, while the original movies, the original six, and the Clone Wars directly from George Lucas were really the only things to remain canon. Uh, at the time, with that being changed over time and things being cherry picked like Grand Admiral Thrawn, etc. But I wanted to take a look today at five Star Wars video games that I really do believe would enhance the story of Star Wars that should still be canon. Now, if you enjoy this, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And before we hop into it, I have to have a really quick and brief thank you and talk about our sponsor for today's episode. Ace Defender. Ace Defender is a high quality SRPG masterpiece combining authentic turn based RPG battles with tower defense elements. The game has a traditional RPG storyline solo player with 40 plus chapters, nearly 2,000 levels. It's over 2,000! A rebellion in the Dragon Clan threatens the balance of good and evil in the world, and our heroine, Alapita, the Silver Dragon Princess, escaped with the Creation Crystal to the Human Lands. There, she awoke that Creation Crystal and summoned heroes to fight evil with your help. There are five hero factions, Divine, Demon, Shadow, Nature, and Light, with deep hero background stories. Starting with 48 heroes, there are two new heroes released every two weeks in-game. You can level up, combine heroes, and equip gear to create a powerful lineup of heroes. One, two, or four times gameplay modes speed up or slow down the action at your pace. There is a solo mode, PvE in order to explore dungeons and regions, engage in trials, level up your heroes and collect rare items, or PvP to play with your friends and others online, fight against other players within your server in your arena, or across servers in the King's Arena with multiple lineups. New users who download the game from the link below in the description will get 10 Royal Recruit tickets after completing level 2-8. You can use the tickets by clicking Sky City Tavern Recruit 10 times. So download the game in the description below and thank you so much to Ace Defender for your support. Thank you very much to Ace Defender and thank you as always to any sponsor that we get that truly helps out the channel in a very uncertain YouTube landscape. And let's hop into five Star Wars games that should still be canon. Number five. The first one is Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Now, I know with all of these, there are going to be some small things that might contradict the existing Disney canon, but I truly do believe Star Wars Bounty Hunter adds a lot into the story of Star Wars, especially with a criminally underused character, Jango Fett. Jango Fett was mostly only expanded on outside of Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones in books and comics and games like Bounty Hunter, but with all of those stripped away in the current continuity, there's not much to him other than some passing references and his inclusion in Attack of the Clones. Star Wars Bounty Hunter really helped expand his role in the universe, and with how much everyone is interested in his son Boba, the most fierce and uh, I guess feared bounty hunter in the galaxy, maybe kind of competed for now with uh, Mando with Jin Jajaran, but I digress. You know, with all of that interest, I think that it really would have helped establish that family lineage and more with the Mandalorian culture and armor and all of that to keep Bounty Hunter in canon. It's not really a story that causes any problems that I can perceive. All it mainly does is flesh out Django as a character more and add in some locations and explorable locales in the galaxy. You step into his shoes, you go around the galaxy as a bounty hunter, capturing prey, killing prey, and fighting your way through a lot of different areas. It's really interesting, really cool, and I think it would only serve to really expand on those characters along with the criminal underworlds of the Star Wars universe. 
Number four. four. It's the fourth one. Four. The next one I have is Star Wars Republic Commando. This is a video game I grew up with. It is one of my favorite Star Wars games ever made. And I truly do believe that this game adds a lot to the continuity. With characters like Boss, Fixer, Scorch, and Sev, there is a lot of humanity to be found in Star Wars Republic Commando. You are able to take control of a squad of elite clone troopers, and as they say on the back of the box, the squad is your weapon. This was a Star Wars shooter not just about shooting a gun, but about controlling other elite units. You are essentially Special Forces clone troopers. What could be cooler than that? Think SEAL Team 6, but clone troopers. Everybody loves the Clone Wars. There was no real reason to strip this out. It didn't do anything to really contradict the movies or cause any problems that I could perceive. And all it did was find a way to further humanize clones, to further humanize the clones of Jango Fett and actually add onto their storyline. It really does fit in well, especially with Star Wars The Clone Wars, which as I mentioned before has been kept canon and was worked on by George Lucas. And it's worth mentioning that these characters, Delta Squad, Sev, uh, you know, Fixer, Boss, Scorch, they all showed up one time in Star Wars The Clone Wars at the beginning of an episode. It was just a brief cameo, but they have been made canon in terms of their existence into the Star Wars universe. So it's very odd that this game was still stripped out of that of that story, of that overarching universe and connected plot lines. I think that it's interesting because this allows you to see sort of the underbelly of the Clone Wars and see a lot of what's going on behind the scenes. You are sent behind enemy lines, you have to get into a lot of grisly situations in this game, and it was almost a answer of a adult-themed property for Star Wars. Yes, it's not some dark, super edgy thing, but it wasn't afraid to get into more of the dark and shadowy parts of Star Wars, kind of like the video game version of what Star Wars The Mandalorian has been able to do in recent years under the Disney continuity. It really did help bridge that gap between fans of all ages, and I remember when I was a kid and uh, my mom wouldn't let me buy Halo, because that was, you know, the big sticking point back then, Halo and GTA, those were the huge, uh, you know, oh man, the violence in video games and stuff, back before boomers understood games. Back when that was really a thing, I played Republic Commando all the time, and I always thought, you know, after playing Halo at my cousin's house, it felt like, what if Halo met Star Wars? But you could add in, you know, even better mechanics with squad control and stuff like that. I loved it, and I really think that it would help the Star Wars universe to be brought back and re-canonized. Number, number three. three! Number three! Number three! Number three! Number three. The next one I have is one that they recently announced they are remaking, that is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and here's my main argument with it. If this game can be remade in modern day, and obviously then, I, I mean, I would assume re-canonized, otherwise what is the point of remaking it, why could this game have not just remained canon? There's not much that this contradicts in terms of storyline, because this takes place thousands of years before any of the movies that we get in the Star Wars universe. There was really no reason to strip Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic out of continuity other than just for simplicity, but even then, why bother? They kept working on Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMO, I believe it is the only Star Wars Legends project still being worked on to this day, and this is one of the most beloved RPG games of modern gaming history of the last couple decades, not to mention a lot of people's favorite Star Wars game. This was made by Bioware, there was so much love and work put into it, with iconic characters like Revan, Malak, Bastila Shan, Carthonassi, Mission Vow, the, the list goes on and on, and there was so much substance to this game, you were allowed to step into the shoes of a Jedi, you were allowed to actually go through the universe and decide what kind of person you wanted to be. Did you want to be good? Did you want to be evil? Why did you want to be that thing? And who did you used to be? This was a game about building a character in a really expansive and lore-filled world, and it helped ground Star Wars because it allowed pretty much anyone to step into the universe and make decisions that, yes, affected the universe, but they were so far in the past that there was no way that they would really screw up the movies or screw up anything. That's why I think this one is especially egregious to be removed, because it was so far 
to the side of the main timeline, that there was no point in yanking it out. It wasn't hurting or touching really anything. And since pulling this out, for some reason Disney and Lucasfilm have seen fit to reference countless things from it, including Revan uh, in the Last Jedi visual dictionary with the whole Sith crystal thing. Uh, you know, th there have been references to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Actually, I believe that the reference was actually one of the uh, one of the Sith cult fleets in Rise of Skywalker, but there was a similar reference to a Jedi crystal in Last Jedi, but I digress. They have had references to this. They've even had references to things like Malachor, uh, with allusions to super weapons and other stuff like that. It really didn't make any sense to pull this one out. Number, Number two, two, the numero dos. dos. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. This is one where you start to get a little more into conflicting story details because of things going on between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So there are some comics in there where you're going to have some conflicting details, but I never understood why this comic, because this game also had a graphic novel, so why this comic series and its video game were retconned out in the first place. Yes, you play as Dash Rendar, and yes, he is a little bit of a dollar store Han Solo. I get it, with his Outrider that is very similar to the Millennium Falcon. I get it. You know, there's some stuff in here that maybe some people are like, eh, this isn't the best, but it did do a lot to fill in the blanks between these two movies because the original trilogy does jump ahead a few times between films, and there was room to breathe in there, but also room to tell more stories with familiar characters. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire was able to do that by introducing new and old characters alike to the video game realm, and really being able to show an expansive world on the hardware of the N64 and also later the PC with the port. Now, I really enjoy this game. Is it dated and aged for its time? Absolutely. But the story itself, it was odd to pull. It was odd to just yank this out, and it very much came off to me like, hey, we just need to pull this out so we can write our own comics which I never understood why they couldn't do so around this game. And again, in terms of actually, you know, establishing other characters and going more into certain events, it helps us see different angles of some key events in the Star Wars universe, like the Battle of Hoth. It also allows us to see some of what's going on behind the scenes with the criminal underworld during this time in the universe. And it even helps expand on characters like Luke Skywalker, specifically in the graphic novel, but, you know, the graphic novel and this video game are very intrinsically tied together. By the way, Boba Fett does make an appearance in this game, which was considered, like, one of the most really, you know, badass-type cool things in Star Wars games at this time was fighting Boba Fett. Now, going back, really janky experience, but it was really cool to see. Plus, with all the hype around Book of Boba Fett and stuff like that, why not? You know, people are interested in that character specifically, and just having him show up another time in Star Wars, the more the merrier. Number, Number one! Splat. We're gonna hop into our top one, and that is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Now, this is obviously a sequel to Knights of the Old Republic. I originally was trying to decide if I wanted to include this because it was a sequel, and I didn't know if that was a bit of a cop-out, but the thing is, this game is very much its own beast, and it did have some problems that really easily could have been rectified by a remaster or re-release without decanonizing it. This game, you play as the Jedi Exile, essentially someone who cut themselves off from the Force and created a wound in the Force, and the game gets a lot into things with the Sith, the philosophy of the Force, good and evil, morality decisions, and the universe at whole, along with how the Force connects everything. This was a game that essentially encapsulates the uh, line that Obi-Wan says in Star Wars A New Hope, where he says that the Force it connects everything, it connects all living things, and it flows through all of us. You know, this was a game that really encapsulated the themes of that statement by showing you exactly how that worked, how the universe worked, how the galaxy worked. I truly believe the reason that this and Knights of the Old Republic were cut, uh, the original, was just to replace them with their own uh, Disney version or whatever version of it to resell them. But it's odd because they still sell copies of this game to this day. 
The only conflicting thing I could maybe see in terms of storyline, because again, thousands of years before the movies, would be the concept of a gray Jedi, but even that has been reintroduced in many ways in the Star Wars continuity with characters like Ahsoka. You know, it, it's something that has been sort of brought back in a lot of ways, and it was even planned in many ways for Colin Trevorrow's take on Rise of Skywalker before that got scrapped and changed to J.J. Abrams. So it's one of those things that if you're removing this for simplicity's sake, I don't see the point. All this did was serve to add more history and lore to the Star Wars universe. And if this game is just remade again, uh, like Knights of the Old Republic 1, to me it's, it's almost an insult to injury thing. Like, yes, I would like to play a new version of this game, but why did we take it away in the first place if we're just going to reintroduce a product by the same name and sell it again? I don't really know how anyone can defend that practice. It really comes off to me like just a money grubbing thing, but I digress. I think this story was amazing. It added a ton to the continuity, a ton to the lore, and it really didn't take anything away that I can possibly think of at all. It also would have given them the chance to fix some key mistakes with it, because this game was rushed for a holiday release. Now, what ended up happening with that was the final act of the game was very severely cut down, kind of like what happened with Metal Gear Solid 5 in terms of Hideo Kojima wanting to add more, but Konami wanting to release it, and it just kind of ended up getting pushed out. This game was sort of pushed out before it was done, but the first four-fifths of the game are done incredibly well, and there have been community mods that have added in all of the cut content back into the game, which is quite a bit, and a very expansive, uh, a lot of content, which if fans can do that, there's no reason that Disney or any of their subsidiaries could not have fixed this game up, re-released it as the definitive edition, and kept it in canon, especially when they did already have to pay or uh, play sort of a a game of picking what they wanted by choosing Clone Wars and not just the movies. Now these are my picks for five Star Wars games that I really do believe should still be canon. I'm interested to hear what you think in the comments down below. Do you like these? Do you not? Are there any games that you would have kept canon? I know a lot of people go immediately to the Force Unleashed, and for me, the only reason that that was not on here was because of the power scaling of the characters. I always thought that that game is not bad by any means, it's very, very fun. Think God of War meets Star Wars, but it's kind of hard to work that into the overarching storylines of what they're doing now. Uh, I, I really do think they removed that just so that they didn't have such a powerful character floating around. But I'm interested to hear what you think about all of this. And hey, huge thank you to today's sponsor, Ace Defender. Be sure to check them out in the description and pinned comment down below and download that. It does help support the channel and I appreciate them and their support very much. If you enjoyed what you saw, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more more content. Have a fantastic day, and as always everyone, stay shway.